Hi, and thanks for joining us on another special edition, well, all the editions are special, of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. And I'm Rocky Holland. And we're very pleased to have a very special guest and friend, Mr. Keith Norton, whose show is the reigning champ of views on Two Guys and a Lot of Wine, well into the 2000s and higher. Oh, well, over 2,500. Over 2,500. 20, not that 600. I'm, I'm not competitive, but I think it's nearing 2,600. I think you are willing to. It, Which, it's, if it's 10 people of you, I'm at 36,000 yeah. people have seen that show. And, and the funny thing is, when we had you on last time, it was sort of a warm theme, so we think we're doing rosé. It was rosé. Rosé night, my, my one one. Uh, it was a wonderful evening, a lot of fun, a lot of great wine, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we have tonight. I think what were you saying before, Rocky, about how many shows now are well into the thousands? Uh, we have now 20 shows that are north of 1,000 views, and these are our YouTube hits. We have no way of knowing how many people actually watch it on public access because there's, there's no Nielsen rating system for public access, so who knows uh, how many people are viewing us sitting here right now. <laughs> Tasting this wine. Keep watching. Uh, your guess is as good as mine, <laughs> but uh, hey, you know, whatever our YouTubes are showing, I'm happy with that. So, And uh, this show is going to be slipping and sipping into spring and summer wines. Now, if there's one thing that Rock and I love, and Keith loves too, in the spring and summer, are good, refreshing wines, mm. whether they be rosés or whites. And I think we have some real winners here tonight. And uh, I'm going to jump right in. We're going to start with the French Sparkling Rosé Amour. Mm. This is a Brut. I'll let Rocky start the pouring down there. And this is available at Total Wine or in the local areas for between $8.99 and $10.99 a bottle. And uh, it's very refreshing. It is great to have on a spring day, a summer day. It's the kind of sparkling wine that's not going to break the bank, so you can keep at least a case of this in your cellar and pull them out when you have friends over. We've never done this one on the show before, and I think Rocky and I have had this either at Rocky's house or my house. And it's just it all, it's an all-around good, cheap, I hate to use for cheap, inexpensive. It is a rosé. good deal in wine. Good that's deal what, in that's wine. That's what we're always looking for. I like. I love a good bargain in wine. I mean, I I, I love a hundred dollar bottle of wine, uh, but when I can find something that just really delivers for the price point, which this one does, um, that's that's what I'm always looking for. And that's what uh, one of the points of this show too is to. Mm -hmm to show people. I know that everybody watching this show doesn't have $100 to go spend on a bottle of wine. And nor should you. There's plenty yeah. of other shows that you can watch to get that kind of information. Occasionally we have some expensive wines, but we want people to be able to enjoy wine at a reasonable price point. And what's the price point on this one, Bobby? This is between eight ninety nine and ten ninety nine. Okay, so for that price, done. I would, yeah, I would definitely pay that again. Oh, absolutely. And I think this is a great wine at that price point because you can get a case reasonably because this is something that you're just going to want to have on hand you don't need food with it i think this is fantastic to sit out on Absolutely. your back deck or your front porch before dinner after dinner early evening share a few glasses and with it's friends. french and it's in a nice bottle it's stay away from mm -hmm. the cooks i mean there's a place for cooks there's a place for andre but come on guys it's spring and but summer you're in West Hartford. You put a nicer bottle out on the picnic table and so forth. And I think you'll notice, too, if you're drinking something like this as opposed to some of the ones that have so much sugar that are in the wines, the next morning you won't have that headache right. that you get That's from true. some of the, some of the um, Aussie Spumantes and the, and the ones that have just you know 20-plus grams of residual sugar. Something like this, as I'm tasting it, I can taste apricot. I can taste uh, a little bit of orange. I can taste some golden delicious apple in this. Coming through for seven to nine, what do you say? Seven to seven nine, 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 nine to uh, ten ninety nine in yeah. that price range? Come on. There's a complexity here that which is sort of above its price point, which mm -hmm. I like. Yeah. I mean, even a person who's a, I don't want to say a wine snob, but likes wine, they'll be able to drink this and say, yeah, there's, there's something going on in here. It's, it's not flat. It's, it's, you're definitely getting some flavor profiles. It's very good. And it's not any particular region of France. I think, Draco, we discussed before the show, it's just a, um, the Vindy uh, Vin de France. It's it's uh, um, just it could be from anywhere. Yeah, it could be from anywhere. Yeah, it's not Appalachian specific. So, but whatever they did, they they took a little here, they took a little there, mm -hmm. they blended it together, and they put together a, a solid product, which is how you how you were able to um, get to good price points. If someone is very skilled at blending a wine from different regions, mm -hmm. that they that they buy in bulk and and they can put it together and produce something like this, that's great. And I've said this before, and I think Rock will agree. Generally, I you can't go wrong with the French sparkling. Even the really cheap stuff tends to be okay, in my opinion. And I think I'm gonna, that's going to be the same with rosés. We don't have a French rosé tonight, but in general, uh, I, my bias is always going to be towards a French wine. So My French rosé won on the last show, as a matter of fact. Actually, so <laughs> excellent point. That's right. I love this. I think this is different fruits that Rocky mentioned. It's fruit with a kick. 
because you're getting a little bit of the citrusy, yeah. hard-hitting fruit, but it blends really well, and it is so effervescent. It and is. And this is something that will you can open up, and it's going to stay bubbly. It's not going to go flat. So until you hit the bottom, you're yeah. going to have one enjoyable glass after another. And this stuff has been sitting out for about 45 minutes, and this still has enough chill in it to still be flavorful. And I, we did talk about some of the other wines on the table, which might be just at the cutoff point where it, it, sh it may be good, it may not be. It's been sitting. So we're about to find out. This is 11%, which I think is a certainly a mm -hmm. perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And I think the next one we're going to be having is the Rosé from Rocky. The Spanish Rosé is 12%. So I think we're going to be moving up a little bit higher as we go towards on the table here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is a wonder for me. I've had it before, so obviously I'm a little biased, but thumbs up on for this one. Thumbs up on this one for Definitely. me. Yep. Definitely. So Rocky Selection is next. Okay, so this one has a story behind it. I'm going to try to keep this as clean as possible, kids. Um, um, yeah. the, uh, so I'm driving through Peabody, Massachusetts. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, kind of like Berlin, you don't say Ber Ber you say Berlin, not Berlin in Connecticut. Peabody. It's not Peabody. Oh, right. yeah, like, like, like P. Diddy, right? Right. So I'm driving through Peabody and I see Bunghole Liquors, and I say, "Wow, <laughs> that that's an interesting name for a liquor store. Let's go see what they have here." And so I go inside and I find this nice bottle. This is JP. Uh, I cannot pronounce this, but it's, this is made from Syrah. It's a rosé. And I did my research, and it turns out that Bunghole is actually a real wine term. If you want to put that back. Uh, and it is, so the wine barrel has the, the holes in the wine barrel that have the, the, so that you can extract the wine from it. And the plug that they use to cover up these holes is called a bung. And so naturally, what is left is a bung hole. Oh. So when the, when the winemaker wants to extract the wine from, there are these large rods that are mm -hmm. called a wine thief. And so they take the large rods and they stick it in the bung hole and they extract the wine. And... Uh, <laughs> You, you, what you do is you, you take your thumb and you put it over the top of, the, of this, this large rod and then you extract the wine and then you pour it into the glass. And of course, you want to be careful because the, the juice that's coming out of that rod, you, it'll spray all over your bunghole if you're not careful. Um, and so this is how <laughs> they extract the wine, put it into the glass, they test it for w how well it's aging. And this, th that's, I that, say that is your lesson in... Who would have guessed? Wine terminology for that. Who would have guessed 30 years ago, <laughs> Beavis and Butthead were above the curve <laughs> and were wine aficionados yes. back in the early 90s. You never, so, you, you would you never know. know. Now, I haven't tasted this yet, so, and this is a Portuguese, you said, right? Or Spanish wine, I'm sorry. This is yeah. from Spain, yep. Yeah. So. And this is Syrah. Oh, yeah. And you could taste oh, yeah. the this, this Syrah, and it, it comes through, but it's not overpowering, it's soft. This is it's, it's very nice. Way better than I thought it would be. This is right. silky. Because it is. It's very let me strange. tell you, the price point on this was we're not allowed to say actual price points. I don't even know why. It, between six and seven dollars. Oh my. Yes. I wish I had bought a little bit more while I was there. I'm not in Peabody every day, but uh, this is not bad for that price point. My God. Oh, I know Keith, you're a hundred percent right. This is really. I got to say, if you'd not tell me the price point of this, I'm. I would have guessed in the $15, $16, $17 yeah, right. dollar Absolutely, range. yeah. This was at Bunghole Liquors in Peabody. Hmm. Go figure. Excellent. But that, uh, I mean, if I, y you know what it is about this? It's, it's silky. This is like. It is silky. It is silky. It is, silky. It it's is got very like a, soft. And, and it's interesting the because. The texture of it is not what I'm used to in some of your rosés. It's almost got like a, uh, uh, almost like Gavi, or I'm trying to think of like Chardonnay, some of the wines that are a little more on the um, whole milk end of the spectrum that you, that you don't normally get for rosés. But this is, this is kind of a cool wine. I gotta say, Bunghole Liquor sells a silky rosé. Take that for what And you most want. of what they had there was your grocery <laughs> store wines that are, uh, you know, your cupcake and your, uh, uh, just the, the stuff that the average fare. everyday fare. Right. And this was something that I found on the shelf. I saw the price point. I was like, I, I got to try this, and uh, I'm, I'm actually you, quite have impressed. Have you looked for this locally? Have you looked it up and see if it's available? Anywhere? I have not. No, I have not. But I will after this show, or maybe I'll make my way. I'm in that region. I, I think there's actually more than one bunghole liquor. I think there's one in uh, Salem, maybe. Um, so they know what they're doing at the bunghole. That's they, all I, I have to say. They, about they, they know how to treat their bunghole. Yes. But I got to say, I, I've had a lot of rosés, and we had a lot of rosés in this show. This is really unique in its own way because yeah. it, it's it it just falls off the palate. It's just you taste it, 
and it says hello, mm -hmm. and then it goes away. Mm -hmm. Which again, you know, what you, you wanted to do, the, the shara, and sometimes I could find a, a shara to be just too heavy, mm -hmm. and it just it linger, it malingers mm -hmm. on your tongue mm -hmm. and your palate afterward. Mm -hmm. This just doesn't. It, it's astounding. As you say, it says hello, I'm here, greetings, and goodbye. Goodbye. And, and, it, it's yeah. yeah. Like the fruit strike gum. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, we all love the fruit strike gum for about two minutes. Fruit strike then gum then analogy. Right, then, then you yeah, spit it out and put another one in your mouth. Right, and then right. put another pack. Right. It's, it's great like, while it's going there. Right? No, it's, but, but for the price point, that's, that's what you expect. But you also expect it to taste like a Jolly Rancher or just a, a mouthful of sweet and gummy and, and cloying. And, and right. not, this one's not getting that yeah. at all. For those of you that like a dry, easy to drink rose without any cloyness or any stickiness in the mouth, I got to say this. This is going to be talked about after the show. Find your way to the bunghole. That's find all. your way to, or look this up online and see what else is available. So no. rock. Google bunghole. And Google, yes. Don't, don't, don't do that because Google. I think you might be. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I have to say, you know, honestly, congratulations to Rocky for finding mm. a right. great, great wine. Unintentionally, mm. happen to be driving through and for getting through that explanation without laughing like I did. That's right. Mm. Well done, my friend. I, 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 Very well done. That was a 100% accurate wine terminology mm -hmm. explanation yep. Yep. and quite frankly Keith I can't believe I got through <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll forgive, we'll forgive Keith. I, did. Again, we'll I, did that, I did that in my head a couple of times before the show I was like there's no way I'd have been I, 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 yeah but. okay well maybe there's comedy in my future yeah. uh, all right another thumbs up so we're off to a rousing start mm -hmm. so um, we're going to be moving into another Spanish white and it's a 100% Maccabeo. Is that the right way to say it? Maccabeo? Maccabeo? Maccabeo. Well, Maccabeo. we're Americans. So we yes. take all the terminology and we butcher it. Mm -hmm. And so we can really pronounce it how we want. I say Maccabeo. But yep. uh, it's, uh, the, the grape is actually Vera. As some of you know as White Rioja. Or in Rioja, they call it White Rioja. But yes, Maccabeo. And this is a 12 percenter. And this is designed specifically for spring and summer. Mm -hmm. I'll let Rocky start the pouring down okay. there. And this is... This is going to be lemon. It's going to be a little apple. It's going to be a little citrusy. And um, it's going to be a little bit bigger hello greetings on your palate. And then it's a slower goodbye, in my opinion. But this is, I've had this once before, and I think this is a great spring and summer wine. And this price point on this one is between $9.99, $13.99, which is a little high for this type of wine for a Spanish white. But um, once again, I think it's worth it, and it's one of those kind of wines that you should definitely have a few bottles for uh, in your cellar. Um, White Rioja, Vieira, Macabeo, they, it's all the same grape. Uh, highly acidic. Uh, it's got uh, almost some, God, this almost has a buttery quality to it, but I'm trying to... Not cloying, though. No. Um, fruit, lemon, lime. Definitely, what, definitely getting what the lemon, am I missing? The citrus. Yeah. I have my little notes Quite here. A Cla bit of a classic bite. Vera, yeah, for for me. This is the uh, Macabeo. They call it in the uh, Peninsula region where they make the cava. They blend it with uh, one called Zarello. Um, are the two main components, I believe, in cava. So we're basically drinking flat cava, and and they've done a, a a very good job with this one. I have no qualms about it. The fact that it is almost room temperature yeah it's still and it good. doesn't have an alcohol burn on it what's no it the, doesn't 12 percent tw okay 12 percent so that kind of makes sense um when you are are tasting wines that are are white wines that have been brought up to room temperature you really get to taste everything you that's sure in do that wine mm -hmm. right oh, yeah and there's nothing that's jumping out at me that's bad about this would I rather this thing be in uh, maybe 10 degrees colder? Yes. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. But if I was drinking this on a hot day and it got to this temperature, would I go grab a cube of ice and throw it in the glass? Absolutely not, because it's still working for me. Yep. So. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to dilute some of that citrusy kick that I'm getting. I will say, however, and if you noticed, I just reached over and, and grabbed some cheese. I think this is a fantastic wine to pair with the cheese. Nothing sharp. But I think it offsets just a little bit of that citrusy, acidic nature. You know, it's funny you should say that. The, come the tasting notes on this are lime and passion fruit. So if you think of like a key lime pie, mm -hmm. um, which is like a cheesecake to a yeah. certain degree. So yeah, cheese would probably go very well with yeah. that. Yeah, very, very good. So I, I'm, I, I could, it, it's one of those kind of wines that uh, it's relatively inexpensive. You will not disappoint your friends or just yourself if you want to keep a few bottles and... Uh, 
um, another thumbs up. So like I said, I mean, we're, we're, we're doing very well tonight so far. Yeah. If you're uh, also, if you're having like uh, Mexican uh, tacos, things like that, food, uh, Spanish whites go really well with, with um, tacos. Right. If you're, especially if it's Agreed. like a fish taco, that kind of thing. So. I've always found it fascinating that, this is a Spanish wine, but Mexico has never really done anything with wine. I know that the, the t climate is not going to be They do make very wine very difficult. Mexico, yeah. But um, we've never done a, a Mexican wine show, and there's quite actually quite a lot of Mexican wine that is available. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's available by here, but I know there's quite a lot of it that is made. Uh, have you had any experience with Mexican wine? No, I think some of the first wines that were sold in the United States, I want to say it was called the Mizzen Grape, uh, Alicante Boucher, I believe, uh, came from Mexico. It's just not a, you're, you're right, it's not a very good region for both with soil and, and the, the temperatures are just get too hot in the summer, yeah. and it just cooks the grapes on the vine, so there's not a whole lot of things that they can grow there. Um, but they do, they do grow grapes and they, they make wine. So maybe if we were to find something, I, I would be more than happy to have a Mexican wine. Yeah, it's just wine. an interesting comparison. I know a lot of people like going to Mexico and some of those all-inclusive resorts do actually serve a lot of Mexican wines. I've had some there. I can't remember what they were. But um, I think it's one of those things that might be interesting to see if we can just... Yeah, we would have to seek it out because you can't go to a local wine store and find right. Mexican wine. Right. Uh, right. All right, maybe. so three thumbs up. So uh, I think we're into Keith's big choice now. Okay, and so this is a Spanish white. It is uh, produced from a Galician grape. Um, it's a fantastic wine, a great, I think, light summer wine. It is um, made down on the banks, of, or the grapes are grown down on the banks of the Mino River right before it, um, it, it empties into the Atlantic Ocean. It's on the uh, border of Portugal, which is a, a very, very uh, prolific grape region of Spain. Um, I like this in the summer. I like this on a very, very hot day. I think it's refreshing when it's very cold, and I look forward to getting your opinion on it. I'm looking forward to it. I guess we'll start down on me this time and uh, look yep. down towards Rocky. And we should warn everybody before we approach the last one, I'll tell this while we're pouring, uh, Bobby has this gadget that opens wine bottles, and we're going to attempt I, I can hear it. It's this old. one right here uh, has the, the has the the wax seal. The wax that's I, I don't even know what to do when it comes to the wax <laughs> as far as how you uh, how does the psalm deal with wax bottles kind of thing. Uh, and Bobby said, "Well, you want to try this?" And he hands me this gadget, and I said, "Let's just do this on the show." So this could go. This could go no, either way. Either either way <laughs> we sort of need to open that one because there's yeah. a story behind this bottle. Yeah, there's a cool story. And it. I have to say yet again, it looks like Keith is the Rocky Pour for this one. Oh, nice. A, so look at that. That is a giant Can you, can you show that to my side. wife later? Or else you, if, she, if I can get her to watch the show. <laughs> we'll, we'll give Keith another glass. Finally, someone I know is that. outdoing right. me. Yeah. Interesting oh, love the yellowish of color. A very Chardonnay-ish almost. And I know you don't care for Chardonnays as a as a rule so no i do not the color was running this is not a chardonnay though no keith even at room temperature this is it's just an outstanding smooth this is, very this very is marty Gras on my wine. palate right here this yeah, is really this nice is very good and i want to look at the bottle but i'm afraid i'm going to yank the uh the microphone out of where I'm hardwired in today, folks. And the price point on this, and again, it, it's not a something higher, right? that, it's a bit higher. You might not get a couple of cases, mm -hmm. but basically 20 to $23 uh, a bottle. Okay. That's, uh, that, that's pretty steep for Albarino, but mm -hmm. I will tell you from drinking this, this is a very good Albarino. Like, very good. And, you know, you, this is another example of, of a white wine. Like, the ones that we've just had, the one before that, there is no burn. There's a slight burn on this one. And the alcohol content is exactly the same, which is very interesting. But there's a tiny bit of a burn on this one. This one's 13%. It is? So it's I one, retract that. 1%. One we went from 12 to 13. There's the burn higher. right there. And I, I, I honestly do not know what the, I used to know, the most regions, they can say it's a certain percentage and they can vary 1% in either direction. Uh, and it, depending on where it is, it can be half a percent or it can be more than that. But I'm not exactly sure what it is for Riaz Baixas. Uh, but I would say that it says 13. I'd probably put it right at about 13. Uh, can you get this locally? Is this a You can. I got this at a uh, local chain uh, that I, I frequent that has a fantastic selection. Um, but, you know, I, I like it even better when it's very cold. 
and this mm. would be one of those that I bring out and keep in one of these fantastic coolers yes. that, that Rocky yes. was talking about before. Um, because I think that as it gets a little bit warmer, you have a little bit more of that burn in the cooler. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But and it's so still nice to yeah. drink, even at this temperature. But it's this beautiful. is a great yeah. comparison with a lot of these uh, Spanish grapes. Gosh, we even have Syrah, Spanish Syrah on here, which right. is kind of weird. But, uh, you know, we've got, um, we've got Verdejo, which we're coming to. We've got Albareño, which I think is just the king of, of Spanish white wines. I mean, when it comes to Spanish whites, I love Albareño. It goes so well with, like, shellfish, mm -hmm. uh, oysters. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of components with it that are similar to maybe, like, Chablis, because you typically get uh, that minerality, uh, like a, like almost like a wet rock, but you get the, the, the lemon. And the difference between, if, 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 if I'm tasting this versus Chablis, is that Rias Baixas, the Albarino, tends to have a lime quality to it. You get lemon and lime, right. almost like Sprite, right? Minus, mm -hmm. the, minus the carbonation. But this is, this is a really good expression of Albarino for me. And you know, to your point, it goes great with shellfish. And I go back to what I was saying before, the region and the location right on the border of Portugal, right at the, the um, mouth of the river as it empties into the Atlantic. And so you're over there, you're pairing this with a lot of shellfish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, th I love this with the paella. Oh. I think it's just outstanding. And it, it's sort of, it, it complements mm -hmm. actually the, yeah. the mussels. Yeah. And, and you know, it's funny, we're talking about things being cold. Maybe that's more of an American thing. It probably is. But I remember all these whites, they were not chilled back in the day when these right. wines were being made. When they were originally being made, consumed, there was no. no refrigeration. So they might have had a little chill if they kept them in a cellar yeah. and so forth, but there wasn't an ice coldness to any of these wines right. back in the right. day. So. And, and, and back in the day, when you go really far back, white wines were considered more um, high-end, noble than the red wines were. I think Riesling, before kind of Bordeaux break th broke through with uh, their Cabernets and that kind mm -hmm. of thing, the white wines and the Riesling, that was considered the, the wine of royalty. Right. The, where, where all the who's who would uh, drink. All right, Rocky, we're ready for the big one here. So let's, this could go either way. So this little contraption is available. You, you I probably, probably should have kept my wine. Oh, okay. So I've got access to a, it Let's generally it works goes. with everything. If, if we can we get so. the, can we get a camera on this before I start? This is gonna <laughs> this is gonna be fun. It's working. It's going down. All right, going we're down. going. Oh, oh there it's it happening. is. It is up. Look at that. Uh oh, oh wait, did, did it, it break? Did it? I think it broke. Oh. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> uh, you can take that cork out and use it again. Uh, yeah, well, that cork comes right out. Just hit the button the other so way. So you? So you go like this. This is a horrible idea. These you know what I think? are still good to have. I just, they tend I, to I, always work I, very well. I love the wax for the appearance, but just for, <laughs> for opening a bottle, come on, people. It's, like, practical. It, it's just not practical. You know what? I didn't see anything fall in, and I can see the bottle pretty clearly. I got this. this plus, no one likes to strain their wine when they're pouring it out. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to make it down there. So. One we thing's did, for sure, I, our wine is I going to taste right. like so pieces of We did of discuss cork. this prior to the show that it can go very well or not well. I would not say this is the not well. I would say this is the half and half. So Rocky being the expert wine bottle opener that he well, is. Well, this is a perfect time to show people when you've got that, you know, oh, yes, I should have known. This is a 2015. This is an older cork. So that's why this is happening. So when you've got that older cork. You go old school. Now, especially if you, you don't know the bottle has been stored on its side. Even if bottles have been stored on its side, it isn't always a guarantee that the cork's not right. going to break. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Perfect. Um, my, yeah, this is, this is a nine-year-old nine white. Um, my suggestion to those of you who like to drink older wines and you have this problem with the cork happen, if you want to start there, Bobby, uh, there is a device that I don't know what it's called, but it's like a needle that goes down into the wine and you can pump it. Yeah. And it actually forces the air. air from the right. bottom up right. uh, and it will remove the entire cork. It can be a 50 year old cork. And to, I, I know that uh, wine snobs, oh, shit, well, you know what I want to do that this, color. will tell you. It's a beautiful white color. There was the, uh, there's a, there's an opener called, I think it's the butler's friend, where it goes down in the sides for, for like the old corks. 
Uh, those are kind of difficult to use. Uh, but I like the one that has the needle uh, that goes down in. I wish I knew what it was called. I've not seen any particulates floating, so that's pretty good. Really? No. That's well done. Well, we had a save. So the story behind this one is uh, it was my birthday uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, if you go to Union Kitchen, we've, we've um, been there before for this show. We've shot on site. They have something called the Mystery Wine. And if they pour you a glass of wine, uh, any glass is $15.00. And you go through there, they've got a book with two, three hundred, I don't know how many, they've got a lot of wines in that book. And if you can pick what the wine is from that book, you get the bottle for free, right? So I was there with my lovely wife, Sandy, and I, I guessed the red, she guessed the white, and she guessed it correctly. And so it is this one. And so we got the bottle, and I said, what a great uh, story to bring on the show. And... Um, Vish, who you know, was on the show with the GM there, uh, was telling us about this. So the family is, the grandfather bought a parcel of land 60 years ago. Uh, this is in Castilla y Leon. And he wanted to grow Verdejo, which was, it, Verdejo is a, a low end. Most of your Verdejo sells south of $10 a bottle. It's not a very expensive one, but he wanted to do it right. So over the course of that 60 years, he learned how to grow really well uh, but he passed away and so the his uh, son is now the farmer and his grandson is the winemaker right and so this is the first vintage that they actually grew and made on their own that they didn't sell to a negotiant that kind of thing uh, and now they make some of the they're very well known for having some of the best verdejo uh, in the region. Is this also 13%? Uh, this one is, I do not know. And I actually wore my glasses today. Probably is around 13%. It's uh, got a little bit more of a to it. My guess would be around 13% for for And what is the price point on this? Uh, so this one's going to run you uh, anywhere between 45 to $50. Nice. Which, which I think is exciting because <coughs> we're talking about a, a grave that, that's grown and, and they usually so for less than 10, but this is a family that they has, over a few generations, really found a way to make something it work. Yeah. that can produce, the, using the same grapes, mm -hmm. a $50 wine that people will buy. Yep. Which is and that's important to remember, even though this, price, this wine is more expensive, there's a reason for that, because it's produced in small quantity, mm -hmm. so therefore the price is going to be higher. And it's definitely a step above probably most of the other types of varietal in this category mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yep. And we have about a minute and a half left of the show. This goes by so fast when we, when we film. And um, I will say Rocky, and Rocky's being very modest. He's won quite a few times at Union Kitchen, I'm guessing, because he is a very talented wine man. So congratulations, Rocky Gags. I know Thank you. You, you and Sandy no, both actually, are, Sandy won. That's true, but you both are very good at I might have had this. this much input on it for her. So I, I definitely want to get us our best in glass tonight. And um, it's going to be a tough one because everything is on this table is delicious. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the first one because I was so sort of surprised by the Attico at the lowest price on the table. Because it's uniqueness and because it's price point, uh, that's going to be my, my winner for tonight. Even though everything, especially from here on down, was top notch. I, well, I love my wine. You should. Mm -hmm. I, I, you I should. love the one that I bought. It is a fantastic wine. I think it is a little, a little on the higher side in the price point, but well worth it. Though I love the Attico in that it is flexible, in that great to drink on its own, but fantastic to pair it up with snacks. So you're picking yours, but I will still pick. Okay. Mine. So Rocky, give me the deal breaker. Uh, or tie. Maybe it's a three-way oh, tie. Oh, three-way tie. I, I, I want to pick mine. Uh, I honestly wait, think... Wait. The bung hole? Not the bung hole. Now, the bung hole, I think, for bargain. Oh, the bung hole, that's true. That but is. I think this one, for the flavor, I mean, this is a fantastic wine. But it's yeah. really hard for me to throw a wine that's, that's this, this cost... <laughs> in with that and then pick Rocky, it. Rocky, I'm going to so, agree with you here, and I think maybe it's a little bit unfair because yeah, everything is I, so I wanna, good in its own unique way. I think we should put the best in glass right in the middle, and I think all the wine should win tonight because that's how good they all were. Yeah. I could do that. In different ways. You could say, yeah. From sparkling yeah. to snacks to, to yeah. elegant to th these two, the family wines. Uh, yep. Yeah. 
So best in glass is all of them. I think right. the best in glass is going to be all of them tonight. We'll just make a big circle with the glasses. We'll yeah. put the best in glass in the middle. We'll take a photo, and I'll throw it up on the interwebs. So, well, and that's once it. again, Keith, I want to thank you for being on the show again. And I, I know so this show is probably going to hit multi-thousands because mm. Keith's on the show. Okay. Rocky, of course, with his talent and his, once again, ability to, to pick some great wines. And I want to thank all of everybody for watching. So 13 years, we're still going strong. We're going to make 15 years. I don't know what the spring and summer is going to bring, but it's going to be interesting. So I want to thank everybody for watching. And until next time, keep Keith, keep Rocky, keep all of us in, in your, your wine, wine cellar. cellar.